Saturday morning at a small wharf on the coast of Georgia and the Spaldings are gathering for a 30 minute ferry ride into family history. I feel great. It just bring back the memories, bring back old memories to me. It's a journey James Spaulding last made as a 20 year old in 1946 to Saplow Island, home for him as a child and generations before him, all the way back to their tortured departure from West Africa. The Spaldings are among many thousands of Americans now reclaiming a culture carved on another continent and preserved with centuries of isolation on the so-called Sea Islands that dot America's southern Atlantic coast. Well, whenever I come here, I feel rejuvenated. I feel like I'm joined with my ancestors because whenever I look out on the Atlantic, I can still hear their voices. I can still feel their spirits. So it's a place I like to come to and meditate. She carries the title Queen Quet. Maqueta Goodwin, traded Manhattan and university degrees in mathematics and computer science for a mission on the South Carolina and Georgia islands where slave traders brought her ancestors. Out there in the Atlantic itself, you would have seen slave ships docked because what they would do is leave the slave ships out at that distance and then take us off, the cargo, the human cargo off and put us on flat bottom wooden boats to bring you into the plantations and then people would be brought off in chains. They are celebrating. They are at home. They are on the continent. What continent am I talking about? Okay, so now they are still at home in the motherland, in Africa. They are celebrating. Appointed as both monarch and mouthpiece for her people, she wages her battle in schools, at public meetings, in the media to reinvigorate traditions lost to most black Americans but still alive here and known as Gullah. Well, out of the population of people of African descent in America in general, they estimate some 500 to 750,000 that are Gullah, that still speak our language, carry on the traditions, carry on the spiritual practices and so on, and live in our homeland, which is the Sea Islands and roughly 30 miles inland to the mainland. Rhythm. Everything's about rhythm, and it's about celebrating Gullah culture. The rhythm extends to a unique Gullah dialect combining African languages with English, and as you'll see, it's even there as they pray. 24 celebrations into the ship, into the ship. Unmistakable traces of Africa in the way they greet one another, even in the food many still eat a culture bridging the Atlantic. So many times people don't want to discuss our culture and who we are because then to even say who we are means that you have to go to the past because the past is the present for us. Most of us still live on the very plantations where our ancestors were enslaved to work cotton, rice and indigo. I can't do nothing, I can't do nothing about that. Oh. <laughs> and so it is on Saplo Island. Many on the Spaulding's bus tour are making their first visit. People don't lock their doors, you know. Vehicles, keys stay in it. But Stanley Walker is part of a tiny community that lives here. On land, their ancestors worked for the slave owner, a man from whom many slaves took their name. Thomas Spaulding lived in the big house. Mm, bad spirits, plantation house. You can't hardly get nobody that's from Sapple that want to stay in it, you know. In Civil War turmoil 140 years ago, the slaves won much of this land, and their families have held it since. And everybody wondered what I was going to do. I told them I'm going to do what I do best, and that's talk. And I've been over here talking ever since. Above rattles in his 20-year-old Dodge van, Stanley talks in part about how hard it is to find a wife on Saplo, everyone's family. Yeah, by the time I got old enough to, know, to start dating, you know, like, no, you can't, um, can't talk to this one because your granddaddy, great, great, granddaddy had a cousin that married her great, great, great so-and-so, and oh, man, on and on. 
He talks too of the most pressing topic here, developers with big checkbooks. Yes, they're slowly moving in. They're going to eventually end up taxing everybody out. And um, I'll be standing on the dock one day telling my grandkids, you know, I used to live over there. I remember the area I used to play in and stuff like that. It's, it's coming. So this is important to us. It's like Custer's last stand almost. You know, and we can see the wagon circling and we don't want it to circle. Cornelia Bailey and Ben Hall are cousins in Hog Hammock, population 70, the nearest thing Saplo has to a capital and the last Gullah settlement on any of the Georgia islands. We grew up with being told that a poor person don't have but three things going for them, and that's God, your word, and a piece of land. They came and sacrificed, they bled, they died for this land. I feel like it's a birthright that I have and that I should never get rid of it myself. But who'd take Hog Hammock from them? Here they insist there are any number of faceless dealers on mobile phones circling Saplo. <laughs> because they're, they are constantly trying to buy property yes. in the community. Constantly. See, we know they're not buying it for just to keep it natural <laughs> like it is. Because no. they're in the business of development. <laughs> If you doubt developers could warm to hog hammock, look at what they've done on other sea islands. Like Hilton Head, they've engulfed it. On this island alone, 24 golf courses, centrepieces in a wildly wealthy playground for some of America's most affluent. Almost every home on the island is either facing a fairway or green. Um, or on one of the lagoons, so everything around here is built on golf. Annual membership to this golf club is $70,000. I'm a golfer. Um, I get out as, as much as I can, but it's just really a very pleasant place to play. Harbour Town is just one of four golf courses inside what they call a gated community, or ironically, a plantation, all behind security. This plantation, for example, you, the public can come in, they pay a fee, and they're monitored when they're in here. It gives people a sense of, of security, plus the fact that the architectural standards are very high here. Hilton Head is so pricey, it subsidizes police and firemen to live nearby. Otherwise, they, like the Gullah people, would never afford it. The new wealth has built out this small island with what's now ranked America's sixth wealthiest town. The average home here fetches three and a half million dollars, double Beverly Hills prices. But for all their effort, Hilton Head's developers couldn't keep Gullah culture. As I drive over the asphalt and the concrete, I can hear my ancestors crying out from beneath it. I can feel a lot of spirits that are unrested there because a lot of grave sites have been disrupted for people to put golf courses and tennis courts and clubhouses and things that are for recreation and no preservation. Unfortunately, growth and development, I don't think, has been terribly um, sensitive to them. It's pushed them out? It's, it's pushing them. It has pushed them slowly into one, one section of the, of the island. Dear Lord, you have always been with this church. You have been with this church for 142 years, dear yes. Father. Yes. We want to thank you for that. Yes. Dear Lord, we realize... Nearby, locals and some visitors from Saplo Island celebrate the anniversary of a local church formed in the dying days of slavery. But right now, Lord, I'm, we realize that we've been blessed I, down through the years. I, but now, Lord, I, as we come to this point, I, bless us now, Jesus. Bless us. Bless us. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you. you may
maybe there three. is the feeling yeah, that nine. there will we be no three. more left of the wonderful black heritage on this island and we will become just another ho-hum community of golf courses and, and gated communities just like the other islands. Local resident Kay Horton has joined this island's African-American community in its fight to put some land beyond wealth, arguing the new money isn't working with old ways. So they have come in not to be part of the community, but to displace the community. Once a year, thousands travel from across the U.S. to Beaufort, South Carolina to celebrate the survival of their links with Africa. I'm still eating some of the same food that we brought from Africa. Black eyed peas, cow peas. I think it's one of the most precious things in the world to me is to be Gullah. <laughs> Among those at the festival, storyteller Vermel Rodriguez with the quilted account of Gullah history. The blocks at the bottom of that quilt, it represent all of my ancestors. White bleach bones that are underneath that Atlantic Ocean. This time of the year, those bones begin to rack up. And they're pushing the wind and the rain and the rain and the water, everything up in the atmosphere. It's the hurricanes. All hurricanes do start off of the coast of Africa. Oh, the world has been very effective at burying Gullah culture. The world's been very effective at burying African culture of any sort. The world has been very effective, especially of eliminating thoughts of slavery. And for all the resilience in Hog Hammock, there's a feeling among residents the world is about to have its way here too. The owners of this modest bed and breakfast have broken ranks and put their property on the market. They wouldn't talk with us. Their cousin, Cornelia Bailey, stopped short of using the word treachery but leaves no doubt she's not following. There will be a few of us left on this island with a shotgun on our knees, chasing off any developers. <laughs> and we might be called the activists or the renegade, anything you want, but there are going to be a few of us standing there with money doesn't count. Look, if I can buy a pair of shoes and buy a dozen eggs and go to the doctor and pay my bills, and I got a roof over my head, what would I want to do with a whole excess amount of money that the government is going to take from me anyhow? Born and raised. Okay. Born and raised. For James Spaulding, the return to Saplo is stirring. Right. We'll come back and visit again together, okay? Yeah, I probably will. All right. We'll I probably will. I won't doubt that. Next year. He leaves what may be his last visit home, thinking in terms of restoration, not development. Well, I don't think you understand. I would care very much to understand for that. I would like to see the, the, the ancestors, the old ancestors, you understand, restore what has been here before. I really would like to see that happen again. With many African Americans now celebrating their Gullah heritage and the places where their forebears preserved it, developers may just have to do without the land owned by the last of the Georgia Island communities. From a businessman's perspective, from a development type thing, it, it's, it's a tremendous success. I think um, when you step back and you look at it um, as a native islander, I think there's a, there's a touch of tragedy to it. Hog Hammock or Hilton Head. To a large extent, development has won out in America's sea islands. We feel that if you came and saw this environment in its natural state, and you thought it was beautiful, then why isn't it beautiful enough for you to leave it like that and live it? 